Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be making a card using the My Favorite Things Polar Pals stamp and die set. It's a favorite of mine. And of course the new Starlight Star Bright background stamp from Hero Arts. I'm actually going to be making six cards so you're going to see different piles of work going on. First we're going to start uh, by stamping some of the images to watercolor marker with the Tombow markers. So I'm going to stamp out these three little images on smooth Bristol cardstock. We're using the narwhal, one of the seals, and the little igloo there, and just my embossing bag. Powder bag, because I'm going to do some uh, heat embossing, which is going to kind of help help me color in the lines a little bit. I'm not the greatest colorist, so anything I can kind of do to cheat my way into doing a better job, I'm going to do it. <laughs> So I'm going to stamp using uh, black um, onyx VersaFine ink and I'm going to clear coat this with embossing powder. This is the uh, Recollections clear detail embossing powder over this, which is going to heat emboss and it's going to create that little ridge that's going to help trap my water. I'm just heat embossing it until it's melted. I'm using the Jerez heat tool. Very inexpensive and perfectly adequate. I think I got mine from Consumer Crafts for around $15. Now we're going to do some very basic and simple coloring. I'm just using six Tombow markers, and I'll go ahead and use my uh, Spectre Noir Sparkle Shimmer Pen to bring in a little detail as well. I have my little travel bottle of paint water here, just taking the lid off, and I've got my basic inexpensive watercolor brush. And I'm going to first go through all of my different images and just outline where I'm going to be coloring. This is my very cheatsy's way of watercoloring with my Tombow markers is if it's a small area, I just color the inside of the lines and then I come back in later and watercolor it out and I kind of let the water do the shading for me. And then that's it. So I think I left most of the coloring in, but I sped it up just so you can see how really easy this is. Even someone who's hopeless with coloring <laughs> like me can do this. It's, it's, it's quite simple and it is a lot of fun. And I know this is, is quite sped up and I did do uh, s enough stuff for six different cards. So that's three pieces of paper. So in total, and of course I was watching um, Netflix or something while I was doing this in total, it's only about half an hour this took. And I just noticed that you can see kind of the reflection from my phone above me as I was filming. That's too funny. <laughs> it's like one of those weird paintings where the world just goes on and on and on through the reflection. <laughs> I'm planning to give a couple of these cards out uh, as uh, birthday cards. And I kind of wanted to send them out soon, so I figured while I was making some, I should do, I should do a bunch. This particular card design is a recreation of one that I did for the My Favorite Things Color Challenge number 108, which is navy, white, gray, and that beautiful teal. So now that I've outlined all of my images, I'm just literally coming in with my water and just spreading it out, and then that's it. And I'm going to do that with all of the uh, little sections of all the images. It does not take very long at all. If I need a little bit more water, I dip in and take a little bit more water, which helps smooth it out a little bit. I just make sure to do kind of one color at a time. And actually, I uh, I did uh, jump through this video skips around a lot. Not that you'll see, but I did actually go through and do like, you know, all of the purples and then all of the greens. So I really do like coloring this way. This is a lot uh, faster for me than, say, alcohol marker coloring and a lot less supplies. This is easier for me to uh, take this kind of coloring onto the couch uh, if we're watching Netflix or something or um, if we're just hanging out at night uh, before bed instead of reading to do a little bit more coloring in bed or to take on the road with me. I actually keep a, a coloring kit with my Tombow and all of these things in it all set and ready to go. You can see how easy this is. Even I can figure out, you know, to do this. <laughs> Add water, spread it out, and then let the water do the shading. 
Obviously, I'm not going to be winning any awards with uh, this talent, but it is quick and easy, and it suits my style. I do like uh, just some fun, bright, simple colors and images. And these images in particular are favorites of mine. I love this little narwhal and this little seal. They're so cute. So as a final detail, I'm just coming in with my Spectrum Noir Sparkle and just putting it on the igloo and then the narwhal's horn there, just to kind of give a little sparkle. Some of the Tombow marker does run off on the bristles of my uh, sparkle marker, so I just wipe it. Yeah, I'm just wiping it right off there on the paper. No big deal, it comes right off. So we're going to set all these aside to dry and then we're going to die cut them. And in the meanwhile, uh, we're going to work on that background, that gorgeous background. This is a new stamp from Hero Arts called Starlight Star Bright. It did sell out at one point. I'm not sure if it's back in stock or not. I'll have a link for it down below. You can check on it. I'm just moving, adjusting my Tim Holtz platform for to accommodate the rubber stamp. And I'm going to be definitely having to stamp this multiple times. <laughs> so the stamp positioner is very handy. I'm using from my stash, deep within my stash, I'm using this uh, pigment ink from my favorite things called Blueberry. And this is a really beautiful ink and I know I very rarely use it. Uh, and I probably used it all up <laughs> on this project because I did make multiple backgrounds. So I'm just inking up as heavily as I can this background and I'm stamping it down and the stamp is going to pick up the the cardstock and I'm just going to smooth it down with my finger to try to get every little nook and cranny that I can and then I'm going to have to stamp it again. And some of these I had to stamp two times, some backgrounds I had to stamp three times, some even four times just from the different coverage, but uh, you'll know when the background is as dark as you'd like it to be. I wanted a nice dark blue trying to replicate navy. I did try this originally with my faded jeans in some black soot distress oxide ink and it wasn't getting the right shade of blue that I wanted and then I found this and it was almost like having an epiphany. <laughs> Plus this is the year of using up stuff that's that I just have kicking around so using up that, that, that ink is the way to go. So there we are with the background and I am going to, uh, once they dry I will cut them down to size for the front of my card. And then I, I off camera, I die cut my little uh, uh, characters there. I'm using some scraps from other projects to make some of the uh, elements for my scene. I'm using that beautiful sea green there to make some uh, stitched waves that's going to be my ocean. And then I have some white scrap there as well that I'm making just a little snow hill with. And I'm gonna use them all to build to build my scene with the snow in front of the water. And here we are with those backgrounds that are now dry at this point. This is another day. Um, I actually uh, made the backgrounds before I even did the die cuts. So <laughs> it's going into the video in reverse, but I wanted to make sure that the backgrounds had plenty of time to dry. So I actually did those a day before I started doing everything else. So I'm just going to start building my card, building my scene. So I'm going to tape up my background here with my uh, one quarter inch uh, double-sided sticky tape and get that placed onto my card base, which is pre-scored pre and pre-prepared. I just kind of pull the amount I need out of the drawer, but I basically make a whole big pile of card bases all ready to go. And I'm going to tape up my green uh, ocean water here and I'm gonna get that layered onto my scene and then I'm gonna put the snow on top of that. And I will go through and build all six cards the same way. Obviously, uh, you know, I'm using scraps. I kind of just, you know, playing this by eye. Not all of the cards are precisely exactly the same. They're all more or less the same theme, but they all have different, you know, slightly different size uh, oceans and drifts and that's fine. <laughs> that's perfectly fine for me. So now I'm just kind of building my scene a little bit. I kind of wanted the narwhal to, to look like uh, she's jumping out of the ocean a bit there. Um, and my my walrus, not my walrus, my seal there <laughs> on the land. So I've got my lawn fawn glue. I am trying to use up, uh, I have some recollections glue I've been trying to use up and I tried for about half an hour and I could not get that bottle unstuck. So I was like, whatever, we'll just go on with some lawn fun glue <laughs> so that we can move on with the rest of this video, but oh, what a pain. So there's my little narwhal hopping out of the water and then I will affix my seal. And then I go through again, just with building the scene, um, I will go through and I will 
attach all of those to all six cards and by the time I get back to the beginning the top one will be dry and it'll be ready to to work with the sentiment these images are so darn cute so for sentiments I'm using another scrap of cardstock that white cardstock that you saw earlier and I'm just gonna lay out six different sentiments from the set uh, there's actually gonna you're gonna see me stamp five of them I needed six of them so one of them I came back after and repeated um, the the sentiment on the other end there and I'm gonna use more of that blueberry ink for my favorite things to uh, tap out the sentiment and I did this right before my lunch break so that the uh, the ink could dry this is pigment ink and it does like to smudge which I learned the hard way. <laughs> I've got my little Carl uh, trimmer there and I'm just trimming up all of my sentiments off the paper and then I decided that uh, the white sentiments on the white if I was going to put the sentiment on the um, on the snow hill uh, it, it needed something a little bit something to pop out so I'm actually going to mat it with a little border of that green here so you're going to see me I'm just taking a sentiment strip and I'm putting some zig glue behind it and I'm just putting it right up on a piece of the green and then I'm going to hand cut that out so it's going to have a little bit of the green border and that just gives it a little something a little more of a pop than just placing it. I knew that I was going to put the sentiment in various different places on the card. I just wanted a little something to give it a little bit of color around the sentiment and that ended up working out perfectly. I really liked the way that that looked and I'm glad because I was kind of uh, making it up as I was going along here. <laughs> so I'm going to place a sentiment. The larger ones are going to go on the bottom and I'm just going to use more of that double-sided tape to attach the sentiment onto my card. A little bit of a a flatter drawing option than than the glue and that's why I opted for tape over glue here. I've noticed a little bit of a smudge from that blueberry pigment ink that I just erased away there. It's dangerous. <laughs> so I'm just adhering my sentiment to the spot where I like it on the card and it does look really nice I think with a little pop of green around the white and this one I think I'm going to put the sentiment on top of the narwhal just to kind of mix it up a little bit. <laughs> and then I go ahead and go through when I put all six sentiments on the cards. And here we are, all six cards, all more or less the same thing, but all made together. A great way to mass produce cards. Um, not counting dry time, it probably only took about an hour and a half to make all these cards. So a real quick project. And that is a good look at the Polar Pals from My Favorite Things, the stamp and die set. It's one of my favorites. And of course that gorgeous new background that Hero Arts has recently blessed us with. I'm going to have all the links for all the products down below. Uh, do definitely check out the My Favorite Things blog with their color challenge, uh, which was a lot of fun this week. And I, I hope to do it again uh, next week and beyond. Thank you very much for all of your support. And I will talk to you later. Bye.